स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया up till now uh, we have seen that complex differentiability is not very different from the notion of differentiability which was developed uh, in your real analysis course the definitions were similar and some of the properties like the the laws of calculus the chain rule etc which are satisfied by differentiable functions are also the properties which we explored in complex differentiable functions in this lecture we will see how complex differ differentiable functions are different from uh, real differentiable functions we will prove that complex differentiable functions are uh, real differentiable functions which have some rigidity conditions let us begin by recalling the definition of a differentiable function yet again uh, from of a function from a subset of r2 to r2 so the setup is the following let uh, f from u contained in r2 to r2 uh, is uh, be a okay. recall that a function f from u contained in r2 to r2 is said to be differentiable so i'll just write differentiable in this lecture when i just use the word differentiable it means real differentiability which you would have already seen and whenever i want to refer to complex differentiability i'll write complex differentiability so this is real differentiability that we are defining right now or recalling right now uh, a set a function f is said to be differentiable at a point uh, z0 in u if there exists a linear transformation an r linear map let me denote that r linear map by df df at the point z0 so at every point at where we are discussing differentiability we have an r linear map which i am denoting by df at z0 so remember that this is a map from r2 to r2 okay so there exists a r linear map such that f of z0 plus h minus f of z0 the approximate linearization is what i'm going to write this is equal to df of z0 acting on the vector h plus o of h so re recall that uh, uh, z0 even though i am writing it in terms of uh, in the form of a complex number z0 is x0 plus i y0 plus for some x0 and y0 real numbers and therefore when i write f of z0 it is a function on two uh, real variables h is also an element in uh, r2 okay so this is the definition of uh, a function f being differentiable at a point z0 we have a linear map df at z0 which acts on h <coughs> at each of those points z0 we have a linear map like this so this is how we have the real uh, differentiability defined and uh, if you recall complex differentiability was not defined very different right the uh, the the function uh, is said to be complex differentiable let me just write the uh, corresponding definition for complex differentiability so that we can compare and try to see what more needs to be done differentiable at the point z0 if there exists a complex number so now we are going to work on c so this was happening in uh, r2 so where h belongs to r2 now we are going to identify r2 with c and let's now work on, on the 
a complex plane if there exists some complex number f prime at z0 such that f of z0 plus h minus f of z0 is equal to f prime at z0 times h plus o of h. So this is again the o of h is basically a function of the type h times e of h where e of h goes to 0 as h goes to 0. So uh, here in the second definition of complex differentiability we now have a complex number which is being multiplied. So this is complex mul uh, multiplication of complex numbers. The earlier one was a linear transformation. So this is linear transformation acting on acting on h here it is multiplication of f prime z0 so complex multiplication multiplication of complex numbers of f prime of z0 and h but then we have an identification of c and r2 right so we would like to ask the following question can we say anything about one notion implying the other an immediate answer would be that a complex differentiable function is always differentiable so let me write down uh, write that down as a lemma a complex differentiable function is differentiable there exists a total derivative by the way so the uh, let me go up and so df at z0 is called the total derivative at z0 so let me not write that down all these things are uh, notions which you would have seen in a real analysis course so the df at z0 is called the total derivative of f at z0 it's a uh, linear transformation and if you recall the matrix of this linear transformation is given by the uh, deriv partial derivatives of the component functions if f is u comma v or u plus iv in in our notation then the derivative total derivative is dou u by dou x dou u by dou y dou v by dou x dou v by dou y the rows the two rows is what i just mentioned anyway those are things which i will assume for the sake of this course let me now prove that a complex differentiable function is indeed a differentiable function always and in order to do that we just need to check that we do have one such we do have one such linear transformation but then we have a candidate staring at us this is our candidate so let's define let me not elaborate too much let me just say that with df at z0 on h defined to be f prime at z0 times h the function is differentiable at z0 the only uh, question is whether the function which we just defined is indeed uh, r linear i leave that as an exercise for you to check that for notice that this is just going to be fine if so if f prime at z0 is something like say a plus i b and uh, h is equal to say x plus i y then the left hand side is df at z0 acting on the vector uh, x comma y and the right hand side is this is just a plus i b times x plus i y let me just quickly write that down in terms of vectors this is just going to be a x minus b y and a b plus sorry a y plus b x this is uh, uh, the identification of the the coordinates in r2 and the complex number z uh, when uh, uh, that will be done freely from now on so it's your job to sit down and see when the uh, the variables are in being considered as variables in c or whether it is being considered as variables in r2 all right so 
I leave it for for you to check that uh, this particular definition you would have seen this in a linear algebra course anyway. This particular linear maps, this map which I have just defined as multiplication by f prime z zero, complex multiplication by f prime z zero, and then looking at it as a coordinates in R two, that's going to be an R linear map. That's quite straightforward. So the uh, the the more complicated question uh, would be to talk about when is a, uh, when is a differentiable function complex differentiable. We would like to get hold of some complex number alpha or rather f prime at z0 such that this is uh, the, the map df at z0 acting on h is exactly like this uh, complex number multiplied to h. Let us see what when we can say that. That is also not uh, difficult to notice. Notice that uh, the first thing to notice is that a function uh, t from c to itself is c linear. So, remember that uh, uh, c is a vector space uh, over c, a one dimensional vector space over c and if we have a linear map from c to itself which is complex linear then t of z is equal to t of z times 1 which is equal to z times t of 1. This is because t is c linear. So, z times t of 1 should be equal to t of z times 1 and this is equal to well always some alpha times z where alpha is the fixed complex number t of 1. So, every uh, linear uh, complex linear map can be written as t of z is equal to alpha times z and uh, it is uh, I mean it is job to check that because of the commutativity of complex multiplication every such map t of z equal to alpha z is going to be complex linear. So, this is this is the exact uh, characterization of p linear maps from uh, c to itself. So, our demand now is to see when is a real linear, uh, when is a real differentiable function complex differentiable. So, if df of z0 on uh, this is, is a after all a r linear map, right, is a c linear map. Then, by the above discussion, there exists a complex number. Let us call that f prime z0 because it fits in our uh, broad scheme of things. Then, there exists some complex number f prime at z0 such that df z0 of h is equal to f prime of z0 times h, where h is in c. So, left hand side I am thinking of h as an element in R2 after identifying c with R2 and right hand side it is a complex multiplication of f prime z0 times h and this is precisely uh, that we are looking for right. We want df to be exactly of this uh, type. So, maybe rewriting it as a theorem we have uh, given one characterization let f from u contained in R2 to or maybe contained in C to itself be to C be uh, a differentiable function. Then f is complex differentiable just rephrasing whatever we just discussed it is complex differentiable if and only if df at z0 is c linear. Let us now try to explore the consequences of uh, what we just uh, did. So, this theorem is uh, the first theorem in the direction of trying to answer the question of when a real differentiable function turns out to be complex differentiable. Let us now try to see what are the implications of the characterization we have seen. 
or we have given. We have seen that our R linear map df at z0 is now a C linear map, right? Let's see what happens if that happens, if that condition is imposed. So let's take some arbitrary uh, linear transformation. Let t from R2 to R2 be a, be an R linear map, be R linear. And suppose this map, when considered as a function from C to itself, is uh, demanded to be C linear. Let's see what happens. So suppose T uh, is also C linear as a map, as a function from C to itself after identifying R to with C. So any R linear transformation T from R to 2, R2 can be described very explicitly. So, uh, since T is R linear from R2 to R2, we have real numbers A, B, C, D in R such that T of X comma Y. So, I will slowly uh, move to the complex notation, but let me as of now treat these as vectors in R2. This is going to be equal to AX plus BY and cx plus by in the second coordinate. So in particular, we know that t of 1 comma 0 is a comma c. Now let's see what happens to uh, the extra condition of c linearity here. If t is c linear, let's see what happens. Then in particular, t of i acting on x comma y should be equal to i times t of x comma y for all uh, x comma y in R2, right? If in fact, if this is satisfied for i, I leave it as an exercise for you to check that t of alpha times x comma y is equal to uh, alpha times t of x comma y. So I have kind of abused the notation here when I write x i times x comma y, what I mean is i times x plus i y. And this is just minus of y plus i times x. So this left hand side is going to be t of minus of y comma x. And right hand side will be correspondingly whatever we get hold of. So I'm going to do this frequently now. It's your job to sit and carefully observe when what notation is being used. So i times x comma y. Uh, is just the same as i times x plus i y. All right, so let's now apply this condition to very specifically to the vector 1 comma 0. So if x comma y is equal to 1 comma 0, what will happen? Then t of i times 1 comma 0 is minus of 1 comma 0 will be equal to i times t of 1 comma what is the uh, left hand side and the right hand side remember that t of x comma y is ax plus by and cx plus, cx plus uh, dy so this uh, i should be a little careful here this is not going to be minus 1 comma 0 this is going to be 0 comma 1 and you'll see that what happens so the uh, left hand side is going to be equal to um, a x plus b y right so b comma d and what is the right hand side this is going to be i times a comma b and that means a plus i b times i which is equal to minus of b comma a because it's going to be minus of b plus i times a that's precisely what it is so this tells us that b to be i times a comma c a x plus b y and c x plus b y so it's going to be i comma i times a plus c and this is going to be minus of c comma a. Right, so this tells us that b is equal to minus c and a is equal to d. That is good because we know exactly uh, what linear transformation we are considering. So consider, now let's get back to the setup we are in. So let f from u contained in r2 to r2 be a differentiable function where x is uh, total derivative of this uh, function at the point z0 
writing f to be u plus i v where u is the real part of f where u is the real part of f and v is the imaginary part of f we can say that df at the point z0 this precisely equal to u x at z0 u y at z0 v x at z0 v y at z0 remember that uh, it's a two cross two matrix the total derivative all linear transformation so linear transformations can also be thought of as matrices i didn't write it down in the form of matrix but this is just a b c d times x comma y and this a b c d is what is being captured here let me elaborate on what the ux and uys are this is just the partial derivative of u along z uh, along x so this is ux at z not and others are defined similarly other uh, quantities defined similarly so basically we are uh, now in the setup of uh, uh, the description of linear transformation as given above and the fact that df is c linear if f is complex differentiable that would imply that df is c linear then df at z not is c linear and that would imply and hence let's go back and check what the conditions were these are the conditions that we end up with by the way i oh i didn't actually complete the chain of uh, argument you should also check that this this is the uh, necessary condition also check that this is sufficient so any map any linear transformation any r linear map t from r2 to r2 given by t of x comma y is equal to ax plus by minus of bx plus ay this map is c linear so it's an if and only if uh, statement that we have obtained so a map if it if an r linear map is c linear then we are forced with b is equal to this equation and uh, if this equation is already imposed to begin with on an r linear map then you can check that it is indeed a, a c linear map as well so along with this observation what we have effectively proved here is that uh, r linear map t from r2 to r2 which is given by the matrix a b c d is c linear if and only if a is equal to d and b is equal to minus c so i'm not writing that down explicitly as a theorem however please keep that in mind because we are going to use that ex exactly here to talk about what happens when df at z not turns out to be c linear so we are in the setup where our df at z not is captured by this particular matrix and we are going to impose the condition of uh, c linearity on this linear transformation and that will tell us that the coefficients in this matrix are related to each other we are going to ex exactly write down the relation that we will be getting so we need uh, to check for a being equal to d and b being equal to uh, minus c so if this is complex differentiable df at z not is c linear and hence ux at z not is equal to vy at z not and uy at z not is equal to minus of vx at z not so these equations are uh, kind of at the heart of all this this equation these equations are called the cauchy riemann equations let me write down this characterization again in another theorem let f from u contained in c to 
see the uh, differentiable function the differentiable at z naught in u then f is complex differentiable if and only if Uh, for f equal to u plus i v we have u x is equal to v y and sorry u x at z naught is equal to v y at z naught and u y at z naught is equal to minus of v x at z naught. So these above these equations are called the Cauchy Riemann equations. So let me just call those as star. The equations star are called the Cauchy Riemann equations. It gives us a characterization which tells us when a differentiable function is complex differentiable at a point. As a corollary, we can also say uh, an analogous statement for holomorphic functions. R recall that holomorphic holomorphicity is the condition of complex differentiability being imposed at every point on the given open set. So let me write it down as a corollary. A function, okay, let f from u, which is contained in C to C, be a differentiable function. So whenever I write u contained in C all through this lecture, it has meant u to be an open subset of C. Okay. Differentiable function on u. So that means it is differentiable at every point on u. Then f is holomorphic on u if and only if f satisfies the Cauchy Riemann equations at every point of u. Let us now look at the Cauchy Riemann equations from a different perspective. Let us go back to the uh, initial definition of complex differentiation that we had defined. So another uh, definition was by considering the Newton quotient f of z minus f of z naught by z minus z naught and by taking the limit as z goes to z naught where z is not equal to z naught in u. Let us get back to that definition and try to uh, somehow get hold of the Cauchy Riemann equations there. So recall that uh, Uh, f is complex differentiable at z naught if limit as z goes to z naught of f of z minus f of z naught by z minus z naught where z is in u minus z naught excess and we said that this is a complex number which we denoted by f prime at z naught. Let us now try to look at this limit being approached in uh, various directions. Keep in mind that this limit should be the same no matter what direction we approach it from. So to do that let us first approach uh, uh, z naught along the along the direction parallel to the x axis. So consider the limit along 
uh, the direction parallel to parallel to the x-axis. So that means what we mean is this is basically the partial derivative of f uh, in the direction of x. So we are looking at the limit as here we are looking at the limit as x goes to 0, x real numbers such that f of, we are looking at this, f of z plus x minus f of f of z naught plus x minus f of z naught by x, where x is not equal to 0. And x small, if x is small because u is an open set, f of z 0 plus x makes sense. And this limit is going to be our uh, dou of by, uh, this is precisely by definition dou of by dou x at z naught. Recall that this is nothing but, uh, uh, this is just u x plus i times v x, okay. Now let us consider the limit by going along the imaginary axis, consider the limit along the imaginary axis. And then we have this is just going to be dou of by dou y at z naught or maybe I should be a little careful here. Let me just first write down what the limit is y goes to 0, y not equal to 0 of f i y going to 0. That's the that's the uh, direction we are interested in, right? So this is y not equal to 0 is the same as i y not, e not equal to 0. This is the limit as we go along this direction, i y minus f of z 0 by i y. This is also the same number as above, right? This is the complex derivative at z naught. As I had mentioned, the direction in which we approach z naught should not matter. In fact, if we approach along some arbitrary curve which passes through z naught, the limit should be the same. If we approach z naught along a spiral which is going through z naught, then the limit considered along that spiral should also be the same. We are just looking at along a, a line parallel to x axis and an along and along a parallel line parallel to the imaginary axis or the y axis. So this both these numbers are going to be the same. But if we just rewrite this, this is going to be equal to the limit as y goes to 0, y not equal to 0. I'll just take out the y out, i out, and this is going to be f of z0 plus i y minus f of z0 by y. And that's precisely equal to dou f 1 by i times dou f by dou y at z0. Uh, to be very precise, this is just 1 by i times uy plus i times vy. And we know that the derivatives along both these directions should give us the same complex number. Hence, f is c differentiable implies that f prime at z0 is equal to dou f by dou x at z0 which is equal to 1 by i times dou f by dou, z, dou y at z0. So the derivative f prime is equal to dou f by dou x, the partial derivative at z0 which is the same as 1 by i times dou f by dou x at z0. And if uh, we write down the two expressions, this one and this one, and equate it, we are going to again end up with the Cauchy Riemann equations. This is another way of getting hold of uh, the Cauchy Riemann equations as uh, a necessary condition for uh, the functions being complex differentiable. So, a consequence of uh, this observation is that. If we look at the restriction of a function f defined in u to the real line, suppose u intersected with the real line is non empty, and if we look at the restriction of this function to the real line, and then think of this as a, thinking of this as a function on the real line, if we look at the derivative 
the derivative with respect to the on the direction there do do g by do x let's say that okay let me write it down the point was that that is going to be exactly the same as the complex derivative at that point let me just write down whatever i just said suppose u intersected with r is not empty and g is equal to f restricted to u intersected with r i e g is a map from u intersected with r into the complex plane then we can talk about the derivative of g and the above observation tells us that the above observation tells us that dg by dx of course there is a imaginary there is a real and imaginary part which i am capturing in this one compact notation dg by dx is equal to do f df by dz at a point z not is the same as df by dz at the point z not so if we use the notation of the restriction the derivative of the restriction and call it f prime it's going to coincide with f prime of z0 which we had defined as the notation for the derivative complex derivative of f z0 so the abuse of notation will still be justified in this case uh, let me conclude this lecture by uh, giving an alternate way of looking at uh, cauchy riemann equations through what is called as the uh, wertinger derivatives <coughs> Let me define the Wertinger derivatives for you. Suppose f from u to c be a differentiable function. So the the total derivative x is partial derivatives give us the matrix of the total derivative at a point z zero in u. Define uh, the Wertinger derivatives. Uh, do f by do z at z zero, and do f by do z bar at z zero by the following formula. Do f by do z at the point x zero. This is being defined as half of do f by do x. At the point z zero plus one by i times do f by do y at the point z zero. So observe that we started off with a differentiable function, so the right hand side makes sense, and we define do f by do z bar at the point z zero to be equal to half of do f by do x at the point x zero minus one by i times do f by do y at the point x zero. So remember that f is a complex valued function. So f is a function which can be written as u plus i v. So do f by do x is basically do u by do x plus i times do v by do x. Similarly, do f by do y, which is featuring here, is do u by do y plus i times do v by do x. That's all that. Nevertheless, do f by do z is being defined in this compact manner by looking at the partial derivatives of f along x and y. So it's a simple exercise which I will leave it to you to check that the function f satisfies the Cauchy-Riemann equations. So exercise. The function f satisfies the Cauchy Riemann equations, which I'll write as CR equations if and only if dou f by 
okay pr equations at z0 in u if and only if do by do z bar of z0 is equal to 0 this is also alternatively sometimes called as the del bar of f being equal to 0 so you should sit down and check that this is an equivalent formulation of the cauchy riemann equations being satisfied so we had seen many examples of uh, holomorphic functions and a few non examples of holomorphic functions let's just revisit i'll not revisit the holomorphic functions because there the cauchy riemann equations will indeed get satisfied and it is just a simple check which you should sit down and do however let's look at the non examples for for a better understanding of the cauchy riemann equations as an example let's start with f of z being equal to z bar and to check for the cauchy riemann equations one should be able to write this as f of x comma i y is equal to x plus i times y and therefore the real part the real part and the imaginary part can be written in the following manner then u of x comma y is equal to x and v of x comma y is equal to y now notice that both u and v are uh, functions which are polynomial expressions so in particular f is a function which is differentiable at every point in r2 let's see so if uh, the cauchy riemann equations are being satisfied the first cauchy riemann equation was ux is equal to vy and the second one was uy equal to minus of vx so you should sit down and check that this is never going to get satisfied oh i made a slight mistake because z bar is not x plus iy it's going to be x minus iy and therefore this is going to be equal to minus of y and if you check the first one here ux is going to be equal to 1 and vy is going to be equal to minus 1 even though the second equation is getting satisfied the first equation is not getting satisfied at any point in r2 so f of z equal to z bar is not uh, complex differentiable at any point another example would be the uh, function which sends f of z to the real part of f the real part of z so i e f of x plus i y is or x comma let me not write down uh, too many things and complicate things for you here u of x comma y is equal to x and v of x comma y is equal to 0 this function is hence not holomorphic on any open set but similarly check that f of z is equal to uh, mod z square this is also a function which will be uh, complex differentiable only at the point 0 0 we have already seen that in a different way but it's good to go back and check that these are all examples of functions which are differentiable as maps from r2 to r2 however they are not uh, holomorphic precisely because the cauchy riemann equations are not satisfied so cauchy riemann equations uh, lie at the heart of uh, understanding complex differentiable functions and uh, the, their interaction with differentiable functions let me stop here